We'll start with a slew of injuries, a long list of growing injuries, both good and bad for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but some significant ones to start with, including some news that the Steelers just released before we jumped on here. I'll let you run through them. What do we got? Yeah, let's start on the defensive side of the ball. Cornerback Corey Trice left Sunday's game with an apparent hamstring injury. It is a very serious hamstring injury, hence the reason he landed on IR earlier today. So it seems like they'll be without Corey Trice for the foreseeable future. Yeah, um, I don't know, you know, what they're looking at, how serious this is, if it goes beyond just the four weeks that the Pittsburgh Steelers are required to keep him on IR, but a blow, definitely a blow. I mean, Corey Trice was not a guy that was going to play a ton of snaps on defense, but he is somebody that you now have to replace. And it's not just, oh, we'll replace him with James Pierre on special teams and everything will be okay and fine and dandy. You got to figure out who's going to play the dimebacker. You have to figure out who's going to take his role as a gunner on special teams because you have to remember James Pierre already had a role on special teams. So now do you put Darius Rush out there? Do you put Terrell Edmonds out there? How do you go about this? And then on defense, the dimebacker, the backup corner to a cornerback group that like Dante Jackson has left both of the last two games at times, whether it's cramping, injuries, whatever and has missed some snaps, not a ton of snaps, and you hope that that doesn't continue, but still enough to to warrant, hey, you're going to need somebody else out there. Is that now James Pierre? Is that Darius Rush? Do you go somewhere else? I don't know. I think it's concerning. You got to hope that it's only four weeks, but a dude who's that lengthy, who's who's that long in his legs, hamstrings are tough, and they get seem to be tougher the the bigger you are, the bigger of a person you are, the longer it takes to heal, the longer those injuries linger. So I would look at this as a very worrisome injury for the Pittsburgh Steelers. One that if you don't have an answer in week four, if that becomes a glaring hole for the Steelers, you probably go out and you find somebody else somewhere to replace a a Darius Rush. You have James Pierre who could be a special teams guy, but you maybe go out and hope that you could get somebody else to be a backup corner, at least for the time being. And maybe Cam Sutton comes back, you know, before that that need really explodes. But that's right around the time that the Steelers will hopefully get Corey Trice back. So that doesn't help them much unless this lingers further than that. But I think this is a little bit more worrisome than the Pittsburgh Steelers or anybody else is going to let on. Yeah, let's stick on that defensive side of the football. Obviously, the highest profile injury from this weekend, Alex Highsmith, who left the game with a groin injury. He's classified by Mike Tomlin earlier today as out for this week, not yet on IR, but it does seem like they're going to be without Alex Highsmith for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I was I was told after the Dallas game, the Dallas game is like his, he won't be back for Dallas. He'll be back after Dallas and or roughly after Dallas, which, you know, avoiding IR is huge for the Steelers in this circumstance. That's that's not a guy you want to miss. I get Nick Herbig is a stud and everybody's fired up about what you're going to get from the second year outside linebacker who had a massive game against the Chargers, who seems like the next superstar of the defense. That's super exciting. And to get to watch him for the next two weeks is, is even better. But you don't want to lose Alex Highsmith longer than you need to the the shortest amount of time possible is what you're looking for. You got to remember Alex dealt with the groin injury in like early August, just at the end of training camp, beginning of preseason. You got to wonder if this is still something that's out there or, or, or is the same from there, or if this is something different and you kind of hope that it is something different. You kind of hope that this isn't something that's lingering all the way back to the beginning of August still, To avoid IR is a positive. The injury itself is certainly a negative. Um, And you could tell that the Steelers are not expecting a, a smooth or a quick ride back for Alex Heisman. It's football season, and we've teamed up with DraftKings. Right now, you can get involved in even more action with DraftKings Pick 6, a brand new way to play daily fantasy sports. And the best part, all new customers who play $5 will get $50 in Pick 6 credits. All you have to do is download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now. Sign up with our code ALLSTEALERS and get kicking. Only on DraftKings Pick 6, the crown is yours. Getting started is simple. Just download the DraftKings Pick 6 app and sign up with our code ALLSTEALERS. From there, just pick at least two players and choose if they'll have more or less of a stat. 
Lock them in and compete against others for a shot at a huge cash prize. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now and sign up with our code ALLSTEALERS only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Let's move over to the offensive side of the ball and get a little bit of optimism in this injury report. Najee Harris was seen with an arm sling on Monday around the facility, but fortunately today, Mike Tomlin shut that down saying with that arm injury, he is good to go. No designation going into week four. Yeah, yeah. From from what I've heard, Najee's good to go. He's going to be totally fine. I mean, you got to remember this guy is he's a workhorse. This is what he does. He gets beat up and he returns to practice. Do I expect him to practice throughout the week? Probably not, to be honest. I I wouldn't be surprised if Najee doesn't practice for the next like six weeks and he still plays in these games. That's who Najee Harris is. He's a guy who, as long as he shows up on Sundays, you're pretty confident in what he can do and you don't really need him to practice. He's a proven bet at this point. I saw him in the arm sling, wasn't super worried um, about it immediately. Still, am, am not worried about it. And Mike Tomlin's, he'll be ready to rock and roll is, is all you really need um, on that side of the ball. I expect Najee to be out there. I don't expect this to be a thing, especially because after the game, you saw him just dressed in normal clothes, talking to people, joking. I mean, I watched him joke with uh, Omar Khan. I think he was making fun of the media, but I, I'm pretty sure he was joking with with Omar Khan, um, and he looked totally fine. So I would imagine it's something that popped up later in the night, was just aggravating him. He came in, made sure to take some precaution. He'll be okay by Sunday. Speaking of running backs, let's go over to Jalen Warren, and he is among the two players that Mike Tallman put under the questionable category going into this week, saying that his limp from over the weekend was not related to the hamstring injury that hurt him during the preseason. So a separate injury for Jalen Warren at the lower body level. He is questionable heading into this week. Yeah, I, I don't know what to expect from Jalen Warren. From what I've been told, it's week to week. It's a knee injury. It's something that they're going to be cautious with. They don't want this to become a thing. They don't want Jalen Warren to get beat up this season. And he's starting to get beat up this, this season. He's got a hamstring, now a knee. You have to look at it and say things are adding up. The Steelers have to be more cautious. And Cordero Patterson luckily gives them a reason to be cautious. He showed he's totally fine as the backup running back on Sunday. So I would imagine he's the backup running back this Sunday against the Colts, maybe next Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys, but that's where the Steelers are going to stand is they're going to rely on the guys that are healthy and they're not going to push guys this early in the season. They're three and oh, that's a great place to be. They want to be four and oh, they want to be five and oh, but they want to make sure that when the playoffs come around and the end of the season's here, they have guys to lean on and they're not losing everybody. So right now where we stand with Jalen is I expect him to be out this week. If he's on your fantasy football team, can him right now at least. Um, and this is a week to week injury with his knee. Let's finish off the injury reports with Isaac Ciamalo, of course, yet to make his 2024 season debut. He is also listed right now as questionable by Mike Tomlin, still dealing with that pec injury, trying to come back. Yeah, this was always the week the Steelers aimed for when it came to Isaac Ciamalo. They didn't put him on IR because they believed that he would be ready for the Colts game. Now we'll get to see if he could be ready for the Colts game. But to be honest, I don't think that he's going to be. The Steelers wanted him or were hoping that he could start to ramp up and get into practice last week. That didn't happen. Now they're going to start to see if it could happen this week. And Isaac is a vet. He's a guy that's proven he doesn't need to practice fully to be on the field, but he does need to practice continuously for the Steelers to see that he's healthy enough to put him out there because they're not going to risk him getting worse or aggravating that injury and if he's not ready yet you don't want to put him out there anyways again it's too early in the season that's where the Steelers stand is it is way too early right now to put guys out there and push them further than they actually need to go in week four I don't know if Isaac plays this week I could see maybe next week but this was always the goal was to get him out in week four against the Colts have him back but again I I believe they they felt like he would be back at practice last week, would have missed last week's game, and then would return this week. Now it's a he wasn't back. Hopefully he's back this week. Um, and by the time next week rolls around against Dallas, he'll be he'll be good to go. My guys, 
You ever lift just a little too hard and forget to apply that daily deodorant only to get hit by a truckload of BO later in the day? Well, does that three-in-one shampoo ever leave you needing a second shower? Here we go. From the founders of Lumi, Mando Whole Body Deodorant is helping men conquer their odor in a new way. Formulated with mandelic acid, Mando has long-lasting 72-hour odor control that actually stops odor before it starts. And the best part is you can put Mando everywhere. Pits, packages, feet, skin folds, backs of knees, everywhere. To top it off, Mando's cologne quality scents are created with men in mind. And well, I'll give you a pro tip. Try their best-selling scent, Bourbon Leather. It's an absolute game changer. I will tell you that I got the package. My wife immediately goes, I could smell that box from over here. And I won't lie to you. I opened it up. I haven't turned back since. I only use Mando from here on out. Let me tell you about the Mando Starter Pack. It's the perfect thing for new customers. It comes with a solid stick of deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked up on your favorite smelling body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Just use the code ALLSTEALERS at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. It's time to smell better naked. Your partner will thank you.